Objects first with Yama, a practical introduction using LuJ, second edition. Um, I bought this one used. Um, I've had a look at this book a long time ago, and um, yes, I want to use Yama. And I've, I don't have any clue anymore how to use this use it so I want to walk through this book and do the exercises um, we'll see preface to the instructor this book is an introduction to object oriented oriented programming for beginners the main focus of the book is general object-oriented and programming concepts from software engineering perspective. While the first chapter are written for students with no programming experience, later ch chapters are suitable for more advanced or professional programmers as well. In particular, programmers with experience in a non-object oriented Oriental language who wish to migrate their skills into the object orientation should also be able to benefit from the book. We use two tools throughout the book to enable the concept, concepts introduced to be put into practice. The Java programming language and the Java development environment BlueJ. Java. Java was chosen because of a combination of two aspects, the language design and its popularity. The Java programming language itself provides a very clean implementation of most of the important object-oriented concepts and serve as well as an introductory teaching language. Its popularity ensures an immense pool of support resources. In any subject area, having a variety of sources of information available is very helpful for teachers and students alike. For Java in particular, countless books, tutorials, exercises, compilers, environments and quizzes already exist in many different kinds and styles. Many of them are online and many are available free, free of charge. The large amount of and good quality of support material makes Java an excellent choice as an introduction to object-oriented oriented, object -oriented programming. There's so much Java material already available. Is there still room for more to be said about it? We think there is, and the second tool we use is one of the reasons, BlueJ. The second tool, BlueJ, deserves more comment. This book is unique in its completely integrated use of the BlueJ environment. Um, BlueJ is a Java development environment that is being developed and maintained at the University of Southern Denmark. Deakin University Australia and the University of Kent and Canterbury UK explicitly as an environment for teaching introductory object-oriented programming. It is better suited to introductory teaching than other environments for a variety of reasons. The user interface is much simpler. Beginning students can typically use the BlueJ environment in a competent manner after 20 minutes of introduction. From then on, instruction can concentrate on the important concepts at hand, object orientation and Java, and no time needs to be wasted talking about environment, file system, class pass, DOS comments or DLL conflicts. Um, 
DLL domain location library and you shouldn't be run into Zost. Um, I don't know what she wants to write or if they will be able to prepare their own libraries. It's object oriented. So writing your class is like writing your own library. We'll see. Um, Environment supports important teaching tools not available in other environments. One of them is visualization of class structure. BlueJ automatically displays a UML-like diagram representing the classes and the relationships in a project. Visualizing these important concepts is a great help to both, te both teachers and students. It is hard to it is hard to grasp with the concept of an object when all you ever see on the screen is is lines of code. The, the diagram notation is a simple subset of UML, again tailored to to the needs of beginning students. This makes it easy to understand, but also allows migration to full UML in later courses. So, UML means Unified Modeling Language. Okay. So they perhaps write some sort of code and then they transport it into Java. I know that you can show your inheritance in DJ. That should be you know, um, I don't know. Perhaps they don't either. I just took it from us. And so I wanted to learn Java. One of the most important strengths of the BlueJ environment is the usability to directly create objects of any class and then to interact with their methods. This creates the opportunity for direct experimentation with objects for little overhead in the environment. Students can almost feel what it means to create an object, call a method, pass a parameter or receive a return value. They can try out the method immediately after it has been written without the needs to write test drivers. This facility is an invaluable add in understanding the underlying concepts and language details.
Ok. I think they're just cheering about. Um, yeah. Dragging and dropping an object into the editor. I don't know. Um, that's didactic, didactic, überbau, um, yeah. It looks nice. I'm, you'll see my monitor if I'm trying uh, while I'm trying this out and um, yeah. If it works out, I'm I'm fine. Um, Blue JS in full Java environment. It is not cut down simplified version of Java for teaching. It runs on top of some microsystems, Java development kit, and makes use of the standard compiler and virtual machine. This ensures that it always confirms to the official and most up-to-date Java specification. of this book have several years of teaching experience with the BlueJ environment and many more years without it before that. We both have experienced how the use of BlueJ has increased the involvement, understanding and activity of students in our course. One of the, the authors is a developer of, Blue, of the BlueJ system. Ooh. Okay. Then you should be an expert. Um, Objects first. One of the reasons for choosing BlueJ was that it allows an approach where teachers truly deal with the important concepts first. Objects first has been a battle cry for many textbook authors and teachers for some time. Unfortunately, the Java language does not make this noble goal very easy. Numerous holes of syntax and detail have to be overcome before the first experience with a living object arises. The minimal Java program to create and call an object typically includes writing a class. Okay, I've got to read this out another time. One of the reasons for choosing BlueJ was to allow where teachers to deal with important concepts first. Objects first has been a battle cry for many textbook authors and teachers for some time. Unfortunately, the Java language does not make this noble goal very easy. Numerous hurdles, hurdles for syntax and details have to be overcome before the first experience with the living objects arises. The minimal Java program to create and call an object typically includes writing a class. Okay, um, yes, you've got to write a master class. And again, you've got to write a method in order to create the object. Yes, object orientated. Um, the minimal Java program to create and call an object typically includes writing a class, writing a main method, including concepts such as static methods, parameters and arrays in the signature, a statement to create the object new, an assignment to a variable, okay. You have got to make an assignment to a variable. Uh, 
and then you have got the variable. I don't think that's correct. Um, the variable declaration including variable type, a method call using dot notation, possible a parameter list as a result. Textbooks typically either have to work their way through this forbidden list, forbidding list, and only reach objects somewhere around chapter four, or use a whole world style program with a single static main method as the first example that does not create any objects at all. Um, okay. I don't think you can write hello world in Java without creating an object. I've never succeed in this. Okay, he starts by making. A circle, a blue circle, and we've got to create an object to make a blue circle. And we've got to create an object, a string to want to. <laughs> okay, I should be so critical. Um, With BlueJ, this is not a problem. A student can create an object and call it its method as the very first activity. Because users can create and, int and interact with objects directly, concepts such as classes, objects, methods, and parameters can easily be discussed in a concrete manner, manner before looking at the first line of Java syntax. Instead of explaining more about this here, we suggest that the curious reader dip into chapter 1 and things will quickly become clear then. Hmm. Oh, I should just skip into chapter 1 and every something. Okay, I've done this already. And they create objects, yes. Do they create a variable? <laughs> we have got parameters, and those might be the variable. And string is not an object, string is data type in Java. Okay, I've made a mistake. So, I don't understand this. But I think you've got to learn this by heart. Um, I don't know why strings data types I think data types are objects too. I don't know. I know they have variables and uh, those are no objects. The screen should be a date. Should be not a date. Um, okay.
an iterative approach. They all have iterative approaches in um, this book. There's two. Another important aspect of this book is that it follows an iterative style with a computing education community. A well known educational design pattern exists that states that important concepts should be taught early and often. It is very tempting for textbook authors to try and say everything about a topic at the point where it is introduced. For example, it is common when introducing types to give a full list of built in data types or to discuss all available kind of loop when instructing the, the concept of a loop. Okay, that's boring. Um, these two approaches conflict. Okay, what's the one? Okay, the first one is the iterative approach and the second one is uh, to yeah, just cover one topic and move to the next one as I've shown the iterative one. Oh, that's nice. I like this book. Martin. <coughs> so, and jetzt habe ich mich schon versprochen. These two approaches conflict. We cannot concentrate on discussing important concepts first and at the same time provide complete coverage of all topics encountered. Our experience in this textbook is that much of the detail is initial distracting and has the effect of drowning the important points, thus making them harder to grasp. Um, These two approaches conflict. You cannot concentrate on discussing important concepts first and at the same time provide complete coverage of all topics encountered. Oh, they sh don't stick to the different moment. Okay. Our experience with textbooks is that much of the detail is initial distracting and has the effect of drowning the important points, thus making them harder to grasp. In this book, we touch on all of the important topics several times, both within the same chapter and across different chapters. Concepts are usually introduced at the level of detail necessary for understanding and applying the task at hand. They are revised later in different contexts, and understanding depends. Depends as the reader continues throughout the chapters. This approach also helps to deal with frequent occurrence for mutual dependences between concepts. Some teachers may not be familiar with an iterative approach. Looking at the first few chapters, teachers used to a more sequential introduction will be surprised about the number of concepts touched on this early. It may seem like a steep learning curve. It is important to understand that is that this is not the end of the story, students. But the end of students are not expected to understand everything about these concepts in theory. Instead, these fundamental concepts will be revised again and again throughout the book, allowing, allowing students to get a deeper and deeper understanding over time, since their knowledge level changes as they work 
their various forms. We will be visiting important topics later, allowing them to gain a deep understanding overall. We have tried this approach with students many times. It seems that students have fewer problems dealing with it, with it than some long-time teachers. And remember, a step learning curve, a steep learning curve is not a problem as long as you ensure that your student can climb it. United to our iterative approach is the decision not to try to provide complete coverage of the Java language within the book. The main focus of this book is to convey object-oriented programming principles in a general, not Java language detail in particular. Students studying with this book may be working as software professionals for the next 30 to 40 years of their life. It is a fairly safe, safe bet that the majority of their work will not be in Java. Every serious textbook must, must of course, attempt to prepare them for something more fundamental than the language flavor of the day. On the other hand, many Java details are important for actually doing the practical work. In this book, we cover Java. So, in this book, we cover Java constructs in, a, in as much detail as it is necessary, as it is necessary, necessary to illustrate the concepts at hand and implement the practical work. Some constructs specific to Java have been deliberately left out to the discussion. So. Ich verstehe es nicht. Naja, ja. ich muss nicht mal alles verstehen. We are aware that some instructors will choose to cover some topics that we do not discuss in detail. That is expected and necessary. However, instead of trying to cover every possible topic ourselves, and thus bringing the size of this book out to 1,500 pages. We deal with it using hooks. Oh. Hooks is highlighted. I don't know. Hooks are pointers, often in the form of questions, that raise the topic and give reference to an appendix or outside material. These hooks ensure that a relevant topic is brought up at an appropriate time and leave it up to the reader or the teacher to decide to what level of detail that topic should be covered. This Thus, hooks serve as a reminder of the existence of the topic and as a placeholder indicating a point in the sequence where discussions can be inserted. 
individual teachers can decide to use the hook as it is, following our suggested sequence or to branch out into side tracks suggested by the hook in the text. Chapters also often include several questions suggesting discussion between related to the topic, but not discussed in this book. We fully expect teachers to discuss some of these questions in class or students to research the answer as homework exercises. Project-driven approach is in the introduction of material in the book is project-driven. The book discusses numerous programming projects and provides many exercises. Instead of introducing a new construct and then providing an exercise to play, this construct construct to solve a task, we first provide a goal and a problem. Analyzing the problem at hand determines what kinds of solutions we need. As consequences, language constructs are introduced as they are needed to solve the problem before us. Early chapters provide at least two dis discussion examples. These are projects that are discussed in detail to illustrate the important concepts of each chapter. Using two very different examples supports the iterative approach. Each concept is revised in a different context after it is introduced. In designing this book, we have tried to use a large number of wide variety of different example projects. This will hopefully serve to capture the reader's interest, but it, is also, but it also helps to illustrate it, illustrate a variety of different contexts in which this the concept can be applied. Finding good example projects is hard. We hope that our projects serve to give teachers good starting points and many ideas for a wide variety of interesting assignments. The implementation for all our projects is written very carefully, so that many peripheral issues may be started by reading the project's source code. We are strong believers in the benefit of learning by reading and imitating good examples. For this to work, however, one must make sure that example students read our Students read are well written ah. For this to work however one must ensure that the examples students read are well written and worth imitating and we have tried to do this. All projects are designed as open-ended problems while one or more version of each problem are discussed in detail in the book. The projects are designed so that further extensions and improvement can be done as student projects. Complete source code for all the projects is included. A list of projects discussed in the is provided on page 26 in the preface. Concept sequence rather than language constructs.
that's okay. I like this. Um, I think I read this out and then I finished. Hope you time to go to bed. Um, concept, concept sequence rather than language constructs. Um, one other aspect that distinguishes this book from many others is that it is One other aspect that distinguishes this book from many others is that it is structured along fundamental software development tasks and not necessarily according to the particular Java language construct. One indicator of this is the chapter high headings. In this book you will not find many of the traditional chapter titles such, such as primitive data types or control structures. Structuring by fundamental development tasks allows us to give a more general introduction that is not driven by into cases of the particular programming language utilized. We also believe that it is easier for students to follow to follow the motivation of the introduction and that it makes much more interesting reading. Okay, so we have got the motivation of the instruction in this. Yeah. As a result of this approach, it is less straightforward to use a book as a reference book. Introductory textbooks and reference books have different partly competent goals, competing goals. To a certain extent, a book can try to be both, but compromises have to be made at certain points. Our book is clearly designed as a textbook and wherever a conflict occurred to the textbook style precedence over the, its use as a reference book. We have however provided support for use as a reference book by listing the Java constructs to introduce in each chapter in the chapter introduction. So, um, yes, tomorrow I'll carry on with chapter sequence and I'll mark the spine. Yeah, good night. <laughs>